Hey everyone, we are going to do a sensory deprivation tank and we're here at the Cloud9 Float Center. We've been here before and you get in these pods of water with a bazillion gallons of uh, salt water, so salty that you float in about 10 inches. It's lukewarm, body temp. Uh, it's completely dark. You don't have your phone. There's no screens. There's no sounds. There's no nothing. It's just you in your brain can you handle it and you're gonna just float there for 75 minutes I don't think there's any scientific research on this because I did a lit search the other day I couldn't find anything on sensory deprivation tanks or float tanks however the spiritual community is incredibly supportive of this if you're into meditation this is what you got to do in there you just float and, and meditate it's gonna be about a 90 minute meditation because really you, there's nothing to do you can't tell what time it is it's dark you can't check your phone so you really you got to meditate and the best way to do it is just relax breathe try not to think about anything and when I've done it before and I've gotten there I kind of got into this state of I wasn't asleep but I wasn't awake so it was kind of like a in-between state and it uh, really refreshed me and the biggest thing we're gonna look at tomorrow when we wake up is HRV and I don't have my whoop strap on right now it's being recharged but in the morning I'll look for an increased HRV and I know my ranges and I've known what my HRV has done in the past but the reason why I'm doing this is I'm not trying to find my inner self although I may but is to enhance my my recovery to boost my HRV and I'm also looking to sleep like a champ tonight so so yeah, you have float tanks, uh, try them out. They're all over the country. This is not a boulder thing, although it suits us very well. And uh, they're, they're all over the country. I'll Google them all the time for my athletes and they, they try them and they recover so much better. So come on in and uh, we'll show you what's what. Here we are. Okay, we're here in the pod room. This is the pod and I'm gonna gonna get down in there and float and uh, get my meditation on for 90 um, minutes for 90 minutes can you do it can you not touch a screen or think about anything so you're gonna get all up in your thoughts and that's the whole idea is to kind of let it all go and then you know physiologically I think it just relaxes you so much that's why your your HRV just goes through the roof and why you sleep so well and it's good to do every once in a while it's a recovery technique that uh, uh, is good for you. And what day is it today? It's the summer solstice, so it's very fitting that we're here in Boulder doing this on the longest day of the year. And uh, there's probably some biodynamic rocket lettuce planting of seeds going on. And uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely woo woo and up here today, tonight. All right, see you on the other side. All right, have a good float. <laughs> you too. <laughs> How do you feel right now? On a scale of one to biodynamic boulder <laughs> summer solstice. I'm I'm at an eleven. <laughs> yeah, I feel really good. It was a it was a good float. I got my uh, I got my um, uh, meditation on, and while I was in there, um, I started visualizing. <laughs> this is this will sound super hokey, but uh, I started visualizing the uh, crusher and the tusher course. Oh. And uh, if you're if you're into the uh, law of attraction and manifestation, I, I visualized myself climbing up the climbs really fast and uh, and doing well there at the end. And and I it, I was I visualized myself high five and all the people I wanted to after the race. Nice. So that is super woo, but uh, yeah, I've heard it works. Okay, so we sat in the float tank for 90 minutes and uh, it felt great. Um, can't really say what happened physiologically, but using my whoop, I woke up the next morning and I achieved a, a score of 98, which is really difficult for me. My HRV went up. This was the highest ever HRV. It was like almost 121. And you can see I'm usually 
in the 40s and 50s. So I attribute that increase due to the 90 minutes I spent in the sensory deprivation tank. So I really don't have any like scientific evidence or literature to uh, you know point you to. Uh, this is pure just coach advice. This is in, uh, something I've done in my experience that has helped that I think could help you too. Uh, the, the sensory deprivation tank again is just 90 minutes, no screen, floating in uh, body temperature, salt water. It's super relaxing, helps your HRV go up and uh, help you recover better. And speaking of recovery, you know, you may be saying, Overton, what in the hell is all this woo woo sensory deprivation tanks? Uh, cryotherapy and winning in the kitchen's got to do with cycling but I was thinking about this and when we were thinking about um, you know recording this video every, for 15 years we've been talking about training and intervals and base and power and everything and we already know that we want to bring you something new um, that you can implement in your training and so for masters athletes we already know what to do with training it's the recovery that we have the hardest time with and we can do the training, but as we've gotten older, we can't do the recovery. And so a lot of this is like recovery tips, the, the winning in the kitchen, cryotherapy, sensory deprivation. You know, we'll probably do one on yoga. Um, I don't know if we could do a YouTube on sleeping. That would be pretty boring, but you know, that, that would be an important one too. So really, sensory deprivation tanks can help your cycling by helping you recover better. And the mechanism is by uh, helping you just to chill out and you can measure that uh, with an increase in your HRV and if you're using a whoop you'll get your recovery score up into the green. Mm -hmm.